Thank you, Lacey. And thank you, Aaron and Roger, for that beautiful piece of music. The good news. The light of the world has entered in. What a beautiful, beautiful image and idea that we cling to, that we celebrate, that we proclaim as God's people this time of year as we gather for worship, as we prepare for this season, as we gather with friends and family for Christmas parties and exchanging gifts and lights and decorations. The reason we celebrate is because something has fundamentally changed in our world by the entrance of this child born in Bethlehem. When Christ is born, history turns. What had been is no longer. When Christ enters into the world, it says a light enters into all of human history in a way that has never been experienced before. It says in Isaiah 9 verse 2 that the people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them a light has shined. This is the prophecy that we find in Isaiah that points to God's redemptive work. God's faithfulness, his promise to his people of Israel. The people who have walked in darkness have seen a great light. Have you, have you ever gone for a walk in the dark? Okay, now, here I'm not talking about, you know, it's evening and you know, I haven't had my 10,000 steps today, or my case, my 3,000, I mean my... My 10,000 steps today, so I should probably get out and go for a little walk around the neighborhood. Uh, walking here in the city uh, really is not walking in darkness. There may be a few areas where it's a little darker than in others, but there's light everywhere all around us. I'm amazed sometimes when you step outside the door, no matter what the time of night, and you can see things clearly in all directions. Way back when, way, way back when, when I was in my early 20s, I spent some time uh, with Mennonite Central Committee as a, as a young adult, and I served in rural Brazil, teaching carpentry skills to uh, teenagers as work skills for their future. The place where I was was about a 45-minute drive from the nearest town. Now, if you know anything about southern climates, the tropical uh, kind of area of the world, you'll know that night comes a little differently than it does here in Manitoba. Here in Manitoba, we have these beautiful sunsets, and the light lingers long into the evening, at least in summer, but even in winter, our sunsets are beautiful and you can feel the light begin to fade. And we stand there and we watch. And I don't know how many sunset photos I have on my phone that just can't bear witness to the majesty of that light and color. But in Brazil, the light is suddenly gone. It's like it was nighttime, and then a few minutes later, it's nighttime. Daytime? Nighttime, yes. <laughs> now, in the evenings after my work was done, I would often go and hang out at my neighbor's place. They were a young family with a couple little children, and it was as a young adult living on my own out in the rural uh, countryside, I was bored and lonely in the evenings quite often, and so I would go and spend time with that family. And so I would eat my dinner, and then I would head off to their place. It was just a few hundred yards down the hill across the cow pasture 
to a nice little house that they had, a beautiful, warm, and loving home. And then we would hang out for a while and talk, and then it would be time for the children to be put to bed. And so I would take my leave, and I would step out of the door, and I wouldn't be able to see a single thing. It was completely dark. Not just kind of dark, it was completely dark. And I would get my bearings, and I would go, okay, I know that there's a path here that I came down the hill on, that walks through this cow pasture. And uh, if I start heading off in that direction, I'm sure that eventually I will get to where I live, to my house. And if I would, I would begin walking slowly, slowly, kind of feeling my way along. Now, the thing about walking through a cow pasture at night, (laughs) you want to move slowly because there's all kinds of surprises along the way. But I found that as I would begin walking back towards where I thought my house was, eventually my eyes would become accustomed. And I could begin to see glimmers of the path, a place where it was a little lighter than the rest of the darkness around it. And eventually I would find my way back to home. Navigating the barbed wire fence was another challenge in the dark, but I did it. I did get smarter uh, the longer I was there, and eventually I left a light on the porch in my house. The thing was that when I usually left, it was bright and daytime outside. There was no need to leave a light on, but I learned that if I left the light on on the porch... When I came out the doors, I knew exactly where I was headed, even if I couldn't quite see the path in front of me. Light provides direction. Light lets us know where to place our feet. Have you ever been lost in the woods? as the sun goes down. It's one thing to be lost in the woods in the middle of the day, trying to figure out, okay, I think that path goes that way. I think the lake is over there, and I think that's the way that we came. But it's a completely different thing when the sun goes down. You lose your sense of direction, your bearing, you get confused. What do you do when you are stuck in the dark and don't know which way you are supposed to go? Lots of us have in our lives those situations, those moments, those seasons where it feels like the sun has gone down on us and we don't know where to go. Things got dark real fast. In some of my readings on dealing with grief and walking through seasons of brokenness, one of the lessons that I remember reading about, and honest, I forget where I read it. It's just one of those things that's become ingrained in my, in my thinking now. It offered this reflection that as we can see the light fading in our world, in our lives, Our temptation is to chase after the dying light. That somehow if we run fast enough, if we move quickly enough, we can recapture the light that was there. As you know, that doesn't work. No matter how quickly you try to move. The question then is, in the darkness, as you find yourself in that place, what will you do next? Will you continue to move in the darkness towards where the light used to be? Hoping that somehow the light is going to return? It's not. 
whether that's the light of a relationship, the light of purpose and direction in your life, the light of certainty that you held so tightly before. As you know about sunsets and sunrises, is that the sun rises in a different place than where it sets. And if you are in a place of darkness, the way that is quickest to meet the light is to turn. To turn from the west to the east. And if you move towards the east, you will see the glimmers of light in the dawn. But if you stay pointed towards the west, it will take even longer for the darkness to be dispelled in your world. The lesson is this, that rather than chasing after where the light used to be, what we must do in our lives is turn towards where the light will come from next. I don't know where the light comes from. I'm confused. I'm lost. I don't know. Where is the light coming from? The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who have lived in a land of deep darkness, on them the light has shined. For the people of Israel, they suffered under oppression the rule of mighty empires all around them. And the light for them came from the words of the prophets. The prophets who said to them, a light is coming. Isaiah 9 verse 6 says, for a child has been born to us, a son given to us, authority rests on his shoulders and he is named Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. The light that was coming was a promised Messiah, a Savior for the people. It says earlier on in that passage that the light has come because it has broken the yoke, the weight that was on them, and it has broken the rod of the oppressor the power that held them down and held them back and trapped them in the darkness is broken when the Messiah comes. The question we have asked numerous times already this morning and throughout this Advent season, we will hear it again, is this. What? Are you waiting for? As you wait, are you waiting in darkness? Longing for light, longing for hope? Today, hear this. There is good news. Isaiah the prophet says, that a great light is coming. And the good news for us is that God never leaves us without signs of hope and light in our world. I want to share with you a painting from 1455, Rogier van der Weyden. This is the central central piece of an altarpiece It's called the Adoration of the Magi. I don't know if you can see it clearly from where you are, but it has all the characters, Mary and Joseph off to the left there, holding the baby and the the Magi that have come to give acknowledgement and worship to the light that has entered the world. This great king, the Prince of Peace. What artists often like to do is point out that there is more to the story than just the scene that you see right at first. 
There are subtle clues, hints of what is to come in the imagery. Do you see it? It's probably too far away to see from where you are. Let's go to the next slide. I've zoomed in on a part of it for you. Do you see it now? In this painting of the birth of Christ, there is an image of the death of Christ. A sign for those who are willing to see, a sign for those whose eyes are fixed on what is coming. This child that is born is the child who will grow to become the Messiah, the promised one, the Prince of Peace who will set all people free. There are always signs in the darkness if you're looking. The promises of God hold true even in the darkness. There are glimpses of the light even as we wait. In the text we read from John chapter 1 this morning, we see this in John 1 verse 6 as it mentions John the Baptist who comes proclaiming the Messiah is coming. Prepare your hearts. Look to God. He is coming. Signs of the light to come. As the people of the book, people who read the Holy Scriptures and cling to them as the living Word of God, we have signs of the light which is to come. These scriptures are an ember and coal of a fire that keep us warm and provide comfort in the long darkness and cold of the night. If we will see it, if we will lift our eyes, The signs in the darkness in our own lives day to day are the promise of God's presence with us, his spirit acting for us. For some, it is an unexpected blessing, an act of love or kindness that comes into your world at a time of greatest need and darkness. A word of affirmation or encouragement from a place you did not expect. An act of generosity or hospitality, compassion and companionship in our need. These are all signs of the light that is coming into the world. Signs of the light that has come into the world. When the light that is Christ comes into our world, there are three things that happen, at least three things that I want to point out today. The first thing that happens when the light comes is that the light reveals things as they are. There is clarity In my story of walking in the darkness back to my home, on the nights that the moon shone bright, I had no problem seeing the path and where not to step in that cow pasture. As the light of Christ enters our lives, as the light of the word of God enters into our being, things become clear. Questions that we carry begin to find answers. Is this all worth it? Is what I have invested my life and my passion and my strength in, is this all worth it? Can I trust this God? Or in our grief and mourning, our losses, As the light enters in, we are reminded of eternity. 
and salvation. And that we too shall enter into the presence of God one day. And we find peace in the midst of our sorrow. In our confusion, in the darkness, as we wonder, which way am I to go? What is the will of God for me, for us, for this community, for this church? As the light enters in, as the Spirit of Christ enters in, those things which are priorities, those things which are important, those things which are at the heart of what it means to be a child of God become illuminated and guide our path towards God. The second thing that the light does is that it energizes us. It lifts our spirits. Many of you in the last few weeks have been driving or walking to work without the light. What does it feel like to go into work early in the morning when it's still dark outside and when you punch the clock on your way out, it's dark yet again? Doesn't that make you feel energetic and just like full of passion and life? No, it's draining, it's soul sucking. <laughs> But when you step out and the light is shining brightly, the sun is shining and glistening on the new fallen snow, (sighs) you feel like you could do anything. This is beautiful. It lifts our spirits, doesn't it? When the light of Christ enters into our spaces, our families, our homes, our world, Our pace quickens a little. We lift our heads. We are filled with joy and purpose. We can see where we're going. And so we move with conviction. The third thing that the light does is that it dispels the darkness. Often in our popular narratives, works of fiction, or the movies and shows that we watch, we see that light and darkness are cast as oppositional forces. And the darkness is always pushing in, and the light is always pushing back. Those are stories. Those are images and ways of thinking about the world, but this is not reality. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Are you saying that that darkness wasn't real? No, that's not what I'm saying at all. But light and dark are not two equal opposite forces. Light is real. Light is something. Darkness is nothing. Darkness is emptiness and questions and wondering and fear. But as soon as the light enters in, even the smallest match in the darkness, as soon as the light comes, What does the darkness do? It's gone. In John 9, verse 5, Jesus says this to his disciples. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. Jesus is our light. Last week, Pastor Janessa called us to actively wait. Not to sit passively. Not to just hang back, but to move and to be expectant 
of the return of Christ. This morning, it's not that we are just sitting in the darkness, holding on for dear life, waiting for the light to somehow come again. Because even though Jesus says in John 9 verse 5, as long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world, he also says to us in the Sermon on the Mount, in Matthew chapter 5, and you, you are the light of the world. Jesus who comes is the light that dispels the darkness. And he has passed that light on to us to carry, to shine in the darkness of our lives, in the darkness of this world. We reflect the light of Christ. We are the light of the good news in the world, the signs in the darkness for those who are longing for light and a sign of the coming of Christ again to make all things right. I leave you with this homework for this week and for this Advent season. In the darkness all around us, how will you be the light of Christ? How will you reflect and become a glimmer of hope, a glimmer of purpose, a messenger of good news to someone around you, just as you too long for that light to shine into your lives. May we be the children of light in this world. I'm going to invite the worship team to come and lead us in a response.